That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid, the federal government has seen fit to pass, and President uh, Trump, I believe, is, according to the last news report, has signed this into law. So it passed the House quickly, it passed the Senate quickly, and the president has its signature. And this has almost unilateral bipartisan support. Very few people actually oppose this, but it is a stupid law. And I know that there's going to be people that are throwing stuff at their computer after I tell you what this law is that I'm calling stupid, but I have a good reason. Hang on, listen. There, there, is, a, there is an explanation following this. It's a law that would make lynching a federal hate crime. Now again, I, I know that there's going to be people incredibly angry at me for saying that this law is a really bad idea, but it has nothing to do with me not being against lynching strongly enough. I think that, frankly... Anybody that is, lin or is, is guilty and found guilty in a court of law of lynching, I have absolutely no problem with that person getting the death penalty. That is perfectly acceptable in my mind. I have no qualms about that whatsoever. And I mean, we have right here in the city of Montgomery the Equal Justice Initiative, their, their museum that is specifically for the victims of lynching, and, and I promoted it when it came out. I mean, this is a very serious subject. But this law, specifically this law, is a very bad idea because it's stupid on four different fronts. And I'm going to give you each of the reasons why this law should not have been passed. First of all, and this is the big one when it comes to most bills, unfortunately, that get passed, it is blatantly unconstitutional. And the reason that I say that is the Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment is the one that states that any powers that are not specifically given to the federal government by the Constitution are reserved to the people or to the states. That's a paraphrase, of course, but that's what the Tenth Amendment says. And there is a reason that just about all criminal laws are state issues and not federal issues. But when it comes to this, this is something that, A, is already illegal, so it's redundant on top of being unconstitutional because the states have laws against this, and B, and this is more important, the states should be the ones to handle things like this. Now, to, to give an example here, the federal government has no right to, to say anything in this in the same way that they are not responsible for dealing with murder. When it comes to murder, with the, the exception of a handful of extremely rare circumstances, that's something that's handled at the state level. Well, nobody is against murder being illegal. Of course, we all agree. That's something that you would get darn close to 100%, if not 100% agreement on amongst everybody if you polled the American people on how they felt about should murder be legal or illegal. You'd get a pretty strong answer for illegal. That'd be pretty much everybody. But that does not necessarily mean that because everybody agrees that it ought to be illegal, that murder should be illegal at the federal level. Now, there are a handful of rare circumstances where murder could be considered a federal crime. For example, if, your murder, if you assassinated a senator, something like that, something that deals directly with the federal government, then yes, it is technically a federal crime. But by and large, the federal government correctly decided to let just about all criminal proceedings, unless it directly involves the federal government or unless it's something that crosses state lines and because of that they have to intervene because no one state has jurisdiction over the crime. Well, if that does take place, then what we have here is a, a precedent that even something as horrendous as murder, it doesn't matter how heinous the crime is, it's not a federal crime because the states are supposed to be the ones that handled this. And lynching is no different. And this is one of the games that the left and the media tries to play, that if you are against this bill, regardless of your reason for it, well, then you must be chastised and cast out of polite society. The only people that voted against it, by the way, were Louis Gohmert, Tom Massey, Ted Yoho, and Justin Amash in the House of Representatives. Because they saw exactly what I'm talking about. The thing's not constitutional doesn't mean you're in favor of lynchings, just means you think that this should be handled at a different level by a different jurisdiction. In the same way, the left tries to play this game all the time with things like federal spending. 
When Rand Paul, for example, who is a fiscal conservative, says, no, we don't need to spend any more money on the food stamp program, they go, see, Rand Paul hates black children. He hates them because he wants them to go hungry. Well, that's absurd. He just doesn't want to spend any more money. Now, you may disagree with his position on that. You may think it's okay for us to spend more money, or you may think that this particular program is so important that it merits more funds being spent, even though we're kind of, well, we're not kind of, we're completely tapped out as a country when it comes to the budget. But ultimately, it's just dishonest to say that the reason that he's doing it is because he hates black kids because some black kids get food stamps. I always thought that argument was kind of racist, too, <laughs> that you would assume that the not voting for more funding for the food stamp program was targeted at black people. What, like non-black people don't get food stamps? That's ridiculous. But anyway, that's ultimately what, comes, what it comes down to. And the reason that so many people voted in favor of this thing even though it probably, they, they looked at it and go, no, this isn't constitutional. It's because they don't want to deal with the hassle. They know that it's a largely symbolic bill that lynchings don't really go on here in America anymore. And because of that, they just look at it as like, look, it's not worth having the fight. It's not worth having to answer a whole bunch of questions but from a bunch of leftist idiot reporters that are saying, so you're in favor of lynchings now? Another reason, the third reason that this is uh, stupid is because the designation of a hate crime is absurd because what this bill does is it makes it a federal hate crime to perform a lynching. Here's the reason that's dumb. Of course it's a hate crime. Are you trying to tell me that a hate crime that's just regular murder, like if you go and string somebody up in the woods and it has nothing to do with race, that that's not a hate crime? If it's two black guys or two white guys or two Hispanic guys and one of them takes the other one and hangs him by a tree in the middle of the woods and then burns his body. Yeah, that's a hate crime. Doesn't matter if it's racially motivated or not. That's the thing that is so dumb about this designation of hate crimes. All violent crimes are hate crimes. I mean, if they're done with malice, unless it was like manslaughter or something. Anything that is done intentionally, if you're trying to hurt another human being, that's a hate crime. And so adding this extra, it's a double super bad murder, if he was doing it because of the color of his skin, well, no, the murder is just as bad regardless of what his motivation was. And then finally, and the fourth reason why this is incredibly stupid, and this is really more aimed towards the Democrats that voted in favor of it, the same Democrats that refused to, earlier this week, I think it was actually the same day that they voted on this bill, they also voted on the Born Alive bill, and the Democrats unanimously voted no on the Born Alive bill, the, the bill that would protect all babies that undergo abortions and survive a botched abortion and then are alive outside the womb, that that bill would protect them. They all voted no on that, and their rationale for voting no on it was, look, that's something that just doesn't happen. There's no reason to add a protection onto this because this is a non-existent scenario. This is just something that Republicans made up. They, it's not really happening. There are no actual cases of this taking place. And so there's no reason to pass this bill. Now, the real reason that they did that is because the abortion lobby didn't want them to vote in favor of it because they don't want these protections for children that are born. Even ones that are born, if it's an unwanted child, in their mind, it's not a child. And there have been countless people that attested to this, including people like Ralph Northam. But ultimately... This is the thing that's, that's so ridiculous about it, because this is the stated reason for this. The sponsor of the lynching bill, a uh, representative, Billy Bush, a Democrat from Illinois, stated the purpose of this bill this way. The importance of this bill cannot be overstated. Charlottesville to El Paso, we are still being confronted with the same violent racism and hatred that took the life of Emmett, talking about Emmett Till, the namesake for this bill, and so many others. The passage of this bill will send a strong and clear message to the nation that we will not tolerate bigotry. Yeah, both of those scenarios you just cited, the ones that are modern examples, Charlottesville and El Paso, neither one of those are lynchings. He's trying to cite the necessity of this bill by giving two scenarios that have nothing to do with lynching. And so it really is primarily just a symbolic thing at this point. But there are, by contrast, some thought leaders on the left that are calling for infanticide. 
Ralph Northam just last year that we were talking about, the governor of Virginia is saying that, well, if there was a botched abortion, what would happen is we would keep the child comfortable and, and move it into another room. And then after that, we would have a conversation about whether or not we should be keeping the child alive with the mother. Um, no, that's a baby that's been born. And even the vast majority of the people on the pro-choice side would say, uh, no, at that point, you have to keep it alive. That's definitely a baby. It's, it's not even attached to its mom anymore via umbilical cord and is still alive. That's definitely a baby we need to take care of. But he's just the most prominent one that's actually an elected official. There are thought leaders that have essentially said this, that there's people that are calling for the ability to kill your children up to the point of about two years. And so, of course, there would be people that believe that if you can have an abortion, what's the difference whether you kill it inside the womb or five minutes after it's born? What's the difference in killing it five minutes before and five minutes after the birth? It's no more developed because of that. And so the only thing that has changed is its location. That This is the, the logical conclusion of the mindset that it's okay to kill children as long as I don't want it. And more importantly... These aren't hypotheticals, as the Democrats are trying to present it as some kind of fantasy that, or some kind of myth that the Republicans are spreading, where there are children surviving abortions and then either not being cared for and allowed to die, or just straight up being killed themselves. Usually, it's, it's more of the former than the latter, but either way, that is happening. In Ohio, for example, there was the famous case of Baby Hope, who survived a partial birth abortion and continued to survive for about three hours, and there was a nurse there that was instructed to bring it to a lab, but it was never looked over by a doctor. Doctors said that it wasn't going to survive, but it wasn't looked after um, after the birth. It was just looked at immediately there, and then they just let it starve to death. I mean, these are horrible, evil people that would not give this child any medical attention because it was a survivor of a botched abortion. And furthermore, the idea that this is not just a one-off case, you can look at some of the statistics, by the way, from the federal government. If you're to look at this study that was conducted by the CDC, for example, which uh, was looking from the years 2003 to 2014, and we'll look at the relevant part of this here, there were 588 infant deaths. So let's look at the text. This is from the CDC. Analysis of the text as reported by the cause of death certifier show that 588 deaths with mention of 143, which comes out to 24.3%, could definitely be classified as involving induced termination. It goes on later to say, however, it is possible that 143 underestimates the total number of deaths involving induced termination. So the two big takeaways from that study that the CDC conducted was that we had about 588 from botched abortions. And of that number, almost 25%, it was, I believe, 24.3% of those cases were where the child was not given adequate medical care, whether that was warmth or nutrition or whatever else. And it was basically a termination, either by neglect or a straight-up termination, when the abortion didn't succeed the first time. I mean, that ought to be horrifying to anybody. Now, granted, this is a very small percentage of the total amount of abortions. Botched abortions are not super common because we're looking at a, a pretty big year span from 2003 to 2014. That's 11 years. But still, is there any other thing where we would look at and see that there are 143 children dying over the span of 11 years and saying, Oh, well, that's not important. Let's not put any legal ramifications in there for anybody doing this. Let's just let them continue killing the children. No, we would never allow for that. Now, by contrast, here is another graphic. This is a study done by the Tuskegee Institute right here in Alabama. And it was done on how many nation nationwide, uh, how many lynchings were going on. So this is their findings. And you'll see that the number on the right there is the total lynchings. The last time America had a lynching was 1964. Now, of course, any number of lynchings is too many, and that is horrible, but the Democrats can't make this argument and talk out both sides of their mouth. 
They can't say, well, it's incredibly urgent that we go ahead and we make sure that there is legislation that would stop lynchings when we haven't had lynchings since 1964. And then say, oh, but the, the Born Alive bill, that scenario never happens. The freaking CDC, a portion of the federal government did a study and said, oh, it absolutely is happening. It's rare, but at least 140 children over the past 11 years have died because of this. And here's another thing. You saw the end of that report where it said that 143 may not adequately reflect it. The reason for that is because the CDC just gathers that data by voluntary reporting. In other words, there is no obligation whatsoever for states to report this data, and there is no formalized way for the CDC to go out and collect this data. They just have it brought to them by the states because there's no law requiring them to do so. Which means that the states that are not reporting are probably the ones that are more pro-abortion. Which means that this number of 143 children that are killed either by neglect or, or straight up by being terminated after botched abortions, that means that probably that's a pretty lowball number. Because if you're New York or California or a very pro-abortion state, you're not going to report any of those. If somebody on the right or the left had opposed the Born Alive bill for constitutional reasons, saying, look, I, I think that abortion is murder, but ultimately, I believe that that's something to be handled at the state level. Or even if you were pro-abortion and said, look, the born alive thing, I agree that you should not kill a child once it's born, once it's already out of the womb and surviving on its own, and, and we should provide care for that. But there's the thing is, that's a very rare occurrence, and it happens at the state level. Uh, and there are state protections for it, and because of that, I don't want to vote for it. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I can see the argument of let's let the states handle that, but that's not an argument that a single Democrat was making. It was all, this is a fantasy, they, this never happens, even when the federal government itself is saying, oh, yes, it absolutely does. But then they make a big priority about lynching when we haven't had that in over 50 years. Is that they're perfectly fine with making a bill that symbolically stops lynchings, which are no longer happening and already are on the books as illegal in all 50 states. And they refuse to lift a finger for the millions of children in this country every year that are lynched inside their mother's womb, the place where they should be the most secure. It's almost like the Democrats do not even comprehend the concept of consistency. Because when it comes to them, they're perfectly fine with tons of double standards like this. They're perfectly fine with making a priority out of a lynching bill, but completely ignoring a born alive bill. And then when an opponent tries to do something consistent, like Louis Gohmert, who has been a constitutionalist and always tries to vote with the Constitution and is a big states' rights guy, when he does something consistent with that, they try to make him out to be some kind of racist that is in favor of lynchings. So not only are they not consistent themselves, they don't recognize consistency in other people. And they assume the worst and try to go with the worst possible explanation of why somebody like Louis Gohmert would have opposed this. It really is like consistency is just a foreign concept to them, that they can't even understand it. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.